Ladies and gentlemen, tonight on Strip Down, the kid band supergroup out of Prince Albert. It's, of course, Cheap Luxury. We are spending 60 minutes with, quote, Kid Band Supergroup of Prince Albert, Cheap Luxury. You know, the viewers at home don't realize, but we completely, on our end, blew the first run at the show, so we stopped tape and started again. And because of that, I arguably delivered my greatest intro in the history of Strip Down, so I thank you for that. I have a theory that if we just kept stopping and starting the show, eventually, after like a couple days, we'd create perfect television, right? Right? <laughs> Welcome to Strip Down, uh, Cheap Luxury. How's it going? Pretty, Pretty good. good. Yeah. Pretty All good. right. Made yeah. the drive from Prince Albert. Oh, yeah. Faced the icy highways of Saskatchewan. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> couple close calls. Couple close calls? Couple close calls. <laughs> Don't tell me about that. I feel bad when I make out-of-town bands drive. But excited to be on Strip Down. It's been a while. I was talking to Joel on and off through the old uh, email for the last couple months trying to line up. Before that, actually. It was all yeah. like last yeah. spring. Yeah, forever, forever. Maybe ago, before that. And I have to apologize, too. I, I thought you were a different Joel once, and I sent you my life story. Yeah, you I did. thought you were a media teacher, Joel. 
who uh, there's a there's a media a class in Saskatoon that we get a lot of our crew from. And I got this email from Joel. It was like, hey, what's going on? How was the show? And I swear, I sent you about three pages of like the last three years' history. And you're like, that's very interesting. So can my band be on? I was like, oh, <laughs> not the same Joel. <laughs> but we've been trying to line this episode up for a while. Correct. Yeah. All um, right. And so. here we are. We're, we're making it happen tonight. So how do you guys know about Strip Down? Um, Seems like there's some familiar faces here. People yeah, are. actually, yeah. a few different ways. Uh, a group that we kind of played a few shows with, uh, NPA, uh, the Dirty Bandits. I believe they were on for a, for an episode, so we kind of yep. played with them. They told us about it. Uh, Steven played in his uh, last band, Nonsense. I believe they played once, maybe twice. 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 They did play twice. Mm -hmm. So that, that kind of sparked our interest, I guess. In Nonsense. Play. Two very, very good episodes. I was a big mm -hmm. fan of Nonsense. I'm not mm -hmm. just saying that. You guys closed the chapter of the original crew. It was mm -hmm. kind of a cool moment. We, uh, the crew that started the show in 2008... We kind of had a final episode, and that was the second time Nonsense was on. And that was the last time those, like, 11 people know, will ever be in this room at the same time. So it's still, right still get a little teary-eyed when I talk about like that Jay night. But made, like, cheap shell. luxury. Give me some band origins. 2012 is when it all started. It started with a big bang. That's what it says on your bio. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Our bio, or, like, three-page-long bio. Um, no, it's, it's funny. Like, relating back to your intro about the supergroup thing, um, Tanner and I had played in a purely Nirvana cover group. And then uh, James played in a purely uh, Metallica cover group. <laughs> and then, so yeah, we kind of formed after we all disbanded from our former bands. Got together, played some 60s rock, um, whatever, played some, you know, free gigs in PA. And then, uh, I guess last spring, uh, Steven came along after he uh, quit Nonsense and picked up the bass for us, so. It wasn't really quitting Nonsense, though. That band is kind of done, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I, and I want to back up, pump the brakes a little bit. A Nirvana cover band. Wasn't Kurt Cobain, didn't he make his dramatic exit in like 1993? Somewhere in yeah, there? Yeah, I think so. Was like what, what year were you guys born? Negative <laughs> 20, no, negative 36 months or so. Wow. So what was it about Nirvana that uh, piqued your interest and said, hey, this is something we need to do? Well, I don't know. It was kind of like we were playing with another guy and... He kind of liked that too. He kind—he was more like heavier music, and we were more like rock. And we kind of met in the middle with grunge somehow. That's basically yeah. what happened. Yeah. So, kind of went from there. We thought, yeah. how many three-piece three-piece bands? You know, like, like what can we play? And then we kind of—we kind of learned one Nirvana song, and then a second, and then a third. And, and then, 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 then you're like, hey, four chords. This is <laughs> awesome. Yeah. And then it being like, like, an, our, like we only played like a ten-song set, and like I think nine songs were. Nirvana, but yeah. So. <laughs> and you guys, when that ended, what happened? You didn't go on and make a Foo Fighters cover band? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, we kind of... It ended okay for you, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, it was good. It didn't end quite like Nirvana ended, no, obviously. No, it was good. I'm, I'm, I'm good, right. so... Um, <laughs> yeah, I made that joke on TV? It wasn't a joke. It was an <laughs> observation. <laughs> then uh, from, from there, I guess we kind of picked up James over Facebook, actually. We didn't really actually know who he was until... We jammed with him. We just, jammed with we just kind of jammed with him. It was like the creepiest thing ever because, like, hey, you want to bring your guitar over and jam? And, uh, yeah. No, you're going to play a show with uh, my band that I had. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, yeah, Nirvana cover band and Metallica cover band. You were the gentleman in the Metallica cover band. Yeah. <laughs> you can call it that. I'm having a hard time picturing this. <laughs> no, with all due respect. So, how does uh, someone as young as yourself make a. Metallica cover band. Um, <laughs> how does that, how do those fall, these pieces fall? Prince Albert is a very interesting place. <laughs> yeah. I, um, I don't know, I was just in high school and I wanted to uh, start a band, but most people that played just, or that I knew just played Metallica. Really? <laughs> See, but, I'm putting you guys in high school in just like 2006, 2007, am I close? Uh, 2000, 2010. 2010. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, it's safe to say Metallica's best days were behind them in 2010, <laughs> and Nirvana's obviously were as well. So oh, again, why, uh, why, why a Metallica cover band? Just that's what the kids were into. And oh, well, that's what those guys were into. Really? If you can call it a cover band, we didn't really learn a song. <laughs> you guys, yeah. <laughs> you guys had a so you were a cover band that didn't do any songs. They they you just, you just tried to sue your fans for downloading your music. That was, <laughs> Pretty much. That was a Metallica <laughs> cover band. <laughs> <laughs> all right, and then uh, so how did you know this was going to be a thing when you guys all jammed for the first time? Like, what were the the first signs that hey, maybe we should drop this cover band stuff, this nonsense, this cover band nonsense? Yeah. See what I did there? <laughs> <laughs> that was cover band nonsense um, and uh, create cheap luxury. That's the weird thing. We didn't even we didn't even know what was going on. Um, we just kind of played, and then we played a bunch of like 
we, 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 yeah, we turned from like a one band cover band to like 60s classic rock cover band. So we kind of went from one, one thing to another that was similar, but from there on, I guess we kind of branched out. But for the first bit, we were just playing like The Who and Cream and all those guys. So. And before we move on, I want to take one last trip to the past. And you got a band member randomly off Facebook today. Is that? <laughs> That's pretty accurate, I would say. And somebody read their Facebook uh, emails and were like, hey, they're looking for a musician. Come to this address. And you just showed up. And pretty, pretty much. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. We, we never talked before that. I, don't, I may have, no, may have I don't seen think it twice, did. but we didn't talk at all. We just kind of, hey, let's play. You knew of each other, though, kind of. Kind of, I feel yeah, like I should make some of, sort yeah. of public service yeah. announcement about just showing up at random people's yeah. houses. Definitely to not. Invite <laughs> you through Facebook and bring your guitar. <laughs> Might not be the best idea. However, in Cheap Luxury's case, it worked out. Oh, yeah. Really? All right. <laughs> what was the first song we heard tonight to kick uh, off the show? That's a, that's a new one we just put together within the past couple of uh, weeks. That one's called Anything But The Truth. What is Anything But The Truth about? Oh, Anything But The Truth. What's, no, what's the inspiration um, in Prince Elva for Anything But The Truth? And that was I mean, a dramatic pick drop. That, was that dramatic. thing's metal. <laughs> <laughs> that's hardcore. As far as uh, influence for that song, I don't, I don't really know. It just kind of came together with this idea of someone looking back on their past about... Uh, all the hurt they caused to themselves by hurting others, and that's where it kind of came from. It wasn't necessarily one particular incident, but it was just kind of... The Are fun. you the main writer, lyricist, or is it kind of shared? 60% uh, of the time, and then it's that's kind of split. That's a very specific percentage. Yeah, it's, it's not even like 50-50 or 75. 60. You just to make sure you're 10% higher. Yeah, and then like share between the other guys a little bit too, so... Okay. Yeah. All right, uh, let's move on to song number two. We have eight songs tonight, or seven? Seven. Seven? All right. We're, uh, we're right on time then to uh, hammer out seven songs in the next 52 minutes of Strip Down's 205th episode. A lot of history tonight. Welcome back, sir, by the way. I guess uh, Strip Down treated you well. Yeah, this, your third, this is your third time then, eh? Yeah. You're getting up there. I think Smoke Killer has the record with five. You got, you yeah, got a little bit of catching up to do, but it's not impossible. <laughs> All right. Well, sorry. The next song you said? Uh, this one's called uh, the Ice Cream Melt song because... Uh, well, due to lack of name. Due to lack of name. Of, or maybe like, not. Maybe it's a good name. We just haven't realized it yet. would be like, oh, we, we should practice that song. We didn't know what it was called. So we just like the ice cream melt song, that one. Because that's one of the lyrics in it. Okay. So <laughs> should we talk about it now or after the song? Um, let's talk about it after. All right. Yeah. Let's, yeah. I will listen. I will dissect the lyrics and return anew. Take it away, Cheap Luxury. One, two. Inside all alone Inside my big old house Seem to be always alone Never out with anyone else in these long Turn off all my lights and unplug all my phone. Somehow it just feels so right when I'm all on my own. And my old Nice surprise, quick ending. That again was 
the ice cream melt song. The ice cream melt song. I heard the lyric, didn't catch the overall theme of that song. It was very 1960s, I thought. It had some very yeah. 1960s flavor. Not that I'm going back to the ice cream thing unnecessarily, but. Uh, <laughs> no, yeah, I don't know. Just kind of a thing that came, came together. I'd written the song before I'd even met any of these guys, to be honest with you, I think. I just kind of put that together and it just kind of sat in the corner. And then when we started jamming more and practicing more, I kind of threw it into that, that mix, so. So I have a feeling this was kind of, uh, everyone had their own kind of stuff they wanted to do but didn't have the right band because they were in cover bands and then once yeah kind once of you yeah, combined was, it was all of a sudden yeah. all these years worth of background yeah. ideas came yeah, forward once, once we threw mm -hmm. uh steven into the mix um then we had two guitars we'd play both parts and everything so that kind of helped as well so speaking of steven and nonsense i can't help but notice i know we can't get a shot of her without spinning the cameras around but uh <laughs> you brought a young lady here who's just watching <laughs> which is always what happened with uh the nonsense shows. So I'm just curious, is she like uh, Cheap Luxury's Veronica, where she's just going to come on during the one song and sing? She's our uh, Yoko Ono. Yeah? yeah. She's going to break up the jam. Yeah. yeah. She, she's not a, a guest lyricist. That's not some no. weird thing. Female uh, song, singer-songwriters in uh, PA do, they only do one song. Not, not quite, I don't think. No? But she's just here for moral support? Sure, yeah. Uh, do you want to give a shout-out? Oh, yeah, shout out to uh, my girlfriend Erica for uh, sitting on the couch. Erica, all right. Aww. Aww. Okay. Making, the, making the drive up from PA. Before we take our first commercial break, I just got to tell you, I always like to uh, Google band names just to see what the hell comes up. And uh, luxury hotels came up. That always comes up. I know, but the thing was I clicked on it and then I got stuck for like 45 minutes. And man, I can get to Cancun really cheap, I found out. <laughs> and then I realized I hadn't done my job properly and didn't search on your biography. <laughs> man, there's lots to do in Cancun this time of year. No, they is. show you like how, how cold it is in, in Saskatchewan versus how nice it is there. And then I got sad. Yeah. But then, I, then it was strip time for strip down and then I got happy. Because I got to spend tonight with the boys from Cheap Luxury. And that's yeah. my very slow process into the first commercial break. So stick around. we got Lost Mer Strip Down coming up right after this. The following sponsors are proud to support community television. The Hairstyle Inn, located in both Lawson Heights and Circle and Center Mall. Long and McQuaid at 721 43rd Street East, and their phone number is 664-1966. Mr. Sicily Pizza in their new location at 833 51st Street. Their phone number is 975-0345. Do you know where your tap water comes from? It can come from one of two sources groundwater or surface water. Surface water often begins as snowfall that accumulates in the winter and melts into our rivers and lakes. Cities will treat it to get rid of most of the impurities and then send it down the pipes, under the streets, and into our homes. The problem is, the quality of water is being damaged by our activities, and as our earth warms up, there may be less water available in the future. How can we look after our water resources? Find out where your water comes from and how it is being protected. Use less when you're showering, brushing your teeth, or watering your lawn. And never pour toxins like cleaning solutions down a toilet, sink, or storm drain as it ends up in our rivers and lakes. It's our turn to take care of this planet, and I think we can do a better job. What do you think? Curtis Anderson's wardrobe is provided by Ultimo Yermota, located in downtown Saskatoon. 664-6640. And we're back. You're watching Strip Down. We're spending 60 minutes with Prince Albert's own Cheap Luxury. Can I ask where you got the name Cheap Luxury from? Um, you so came from a Nirvana cover band, <laughs> smashed with a Metallica cover band, with an ex-member of Prince Albert's own nonsense, and just Cheap Luxury. Um, geez. Cheap luxury. How, That's the know, one question kinda... you should have expected, young man. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> <laughs> it always is. Every <laughs> lazy um, reporter since the know. history of time will ask you where you got your band name from. Um, we were thinking for a long time. We, we thought for a long time after our, one of our first band broke up, we wanted the better name because we didn't really want to keep the same one, so we thought we'd get a new name. 
Yeah, um, Nirvana was also used. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Um, so Saurus Rex. Yeah, we, it was uh, the Saurus Rex. And then we like, <laughs> <laughs> the band could even pronounce it clearly enough, so we just thought we'd give up hope on that. Um, and then we decided, we, I think we didn't really have a name yet, but we decided we wanted to wear suit jackets from Valley Village. So we got those. And like, Is there oh. any other kind? <laughs> That's the thing. Why would you want to pay any more? So we got you know, these $6 suit jackets, and then we thought, man, these are like the most luxurious things, and they cost us 5 bucks. Mm. $6 suit jackets is actually a pretty sweet name. That is, that is a good name. That's not too bad. Not Maybe that if I... we form another cover band, it'll be just called. Uh, I'm going to form a cheap luxury cover band. Such oh, a $6, yeah. $6, suit, <laughs> $6 suit jackets. <laughs> Yeah. Should we get to more music? That would be sure. that would be fine. What song is next? Uh, this one's called uh, Anne Storm. Uh, it was written by a uh, bass player, uh, Stephen Williams. But so he's gonna play some guitar for this one. <laughs> Sweet. There was some some mixing of guitars yeah, going on during our very short commercial you break, bet. which I still have. Some, I should take care of that one of these days. After every show, I'm like, oh, the commercial break was only 60 seconds. I should probably pad that out. But here we are, another All week. All right. All right, take it away. One. Prince Albert's own cheap luxury in the Shaw TV studios tonight. I really dug that song. That was, again, talking about the 1950s and 60s mm -hmm. input. That was, that was pretty awesome. That was your song? Yeah. <laughs> so when you play a show, I'm guessing you still do a lot of covers? Yeah, we uh, still do. Yeah. Uh, yeah, a few, yeah. Depending on, Depending on the show. But. Mm -hmm. but I think you got it down to a science because that song was very accessible to like a 50s and 60s crowd, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a cover, but it sounds... In the in the same uh, in the same theme, so it's it well done. 
because I find that's probably the most heartbreaking thing for bands when they're you know performing and they're killing the killing themselves with all their hard original music and then they do like wipe out and the crowd goes crazy right yeah exactly. it's got to be discouraging on some levels <laughs> let's talk about the EP that came out May May it was a while ago that's not that long ago like this last May yeah this last past May so uh, gearing up, making uh, making an EP. How did it all come together? Where'd um, you do it? Actually, it yeah, it was just right around the time um, when Steven joined. So I think he, he just joined like right after recording was done. Um, I got like a Pro Tools unit set up in my basement. So we cut it all there. Um, and then we sent it over to uh, Mosaic Music uh, in Prince Albert. And uh, Richard McFarlane there uh, mixed it all down. So sounded good, but it was all done on our own time, on our own money. So it turned out great, I think. Five songs. Um, like our first five songs, I guess, we called it Greatest Hits. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I thought it was pretty yeah. successful. We yeah. hung up some bed sheets in the yeah. basement, recorded yeah. drums. Yeah, we didn't have any acoustic panels, so we hung out like, yeah, it was ridiculous. Like, basically, I had bed sheets and blankets just everywhere on the drums, so, but. Is that a time you look back glowingly as a band, or were you just like, oh, let's get this done? Ah. Oh. <laughs> in the moment of recording it, uh, oh, that was not. <laughs> No. You were not in a good place? I was not in a good place. But after it was all said and done, it turned out pretty good. We I think so, yeah. played a little show to kind of promote it, and that went really good. And, so. and all the wounds have healed. You're ready to get back in there and start I, recording again? I think so, yeah. Oh, this, yeah. Mm -hmm. We're going to go into uh, a studio here in Stude on Friday, I guess. To oh, record, wow. To record one song to start it, so, yeah. In a rare moment we'll, where I will try to make the viewers not angry at me, if they pick up a, your EP, is it going to be similar to what they're hearing tonight? Actually, I think you'll hear a song off it right away that we'll play that uh, that is off the EP and a few of it yeah it does sound similar but there's a few songs that are a little bit different not that they're any less but so okay so uh, another EP or full length sorry y you're working on not I, sure we're not, not sure, sure yet, yet. We're, we're probably thinking another EP but it could be a full length depends on resources I guess you know so so compare the last EP to the future project you said it changed your sound changed Sa a little. sound changed so how, how did it change what do you think it sounds more Grown up, I guess. I don't know. What do you What do you think? Yeah, I guess more modern too. Uh, yeah, more in a, in a way more modern, but a way not more modern. So different style. <laughs> it's, it's clear as glass, guys. Yeah. <laughs> no, um, it's that rare mix of more modern and less modern that's really yeah, yeah, yeah. popular no, these days. <laughs> yeah, there's more guitar melody going on rather than just you know a few a few chords with a little bit of riff yeah. riffage. Because but when we recorded the CD, we only had one guitar player, so so. Yeah. More intricate, maybe. Yeah. More melodic. More, yeah, more melodic. Can people still get their hands on the EP? You bet. Um, for many, I guess if you're from PA, for many of us as well, uh, at the moment it's just available at a uh, few stores in Prince Albert. But I think we'll, we'll branch out to get some in Saskatoon as well. So. Yeah. Are you playing a lot in Prince Albert. Is that the, uh, the hope, is to branch out and play more around Saskatchewan? I, th I think yeah. so. For the new year, I think that's one of our goals is to get out, get out more expand for because we built a big enough like fan base I guess in PA that we'd want to branch out a bit so we've uh, we've I'm talking like I'm from Prince Albert but you guys have lost a lot of musical talent a lot of them have uh, moved I've noticed yeah like uh, former lead singer of nonsense is here now uh, another young uh, woman who's been on the show once Joanna D she's in Saskatoon now yeah a lot of I former uh, the dirty bandits so most of those guys they're moved. still they're still making it I guess, well um, one of their members moved to Edmonton but but they're still a band, or mm, not kind, kind of. of actually, on? I, the Dirty Bandits and uh, the Matt Remenda Ensemble actually joined. Matt Remenda, yeah, because Matt Remenda is another guy in yeah, Saskatoon yeah. now. Um, I forget what they called them, like the Dirty Remenda Ensemble or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> something of like course. That. All right, what do you have? Uh, what's next? Um, this next one is actually a song I wrote for a competition in PA called Search of the Stars. Um, yeah, it's about my father who passed away in 2005, I guess. And huh. I just thought with the addition of another member, it kind of fit in, fit in perfectly. So I decided to add it into our, our repertoire. So, All right, coming out of this song, we will talk to this week's audio engineer, Mr. Davis Baker, but take it away, Cheap Luxury.
Now is the part of the show I call, let's chat with the audio engineer, but the people in the control room call it the worst part of the show technically <laughs> because we usually share one mic and it's an absolute nightmare because sometimes I talk loud and then Davis talks low and there's people in there going like this with the sliders and they're already mad at me. So let's just <laughs> keep going like this is going well. Davis Baker, welcome back this week. Thank you. It's, uh, it's good to be back. It's good to have you back. Always Thank a good you. time when you're uh, behind the board. We've seen many colorful audio engineers over the years. Yeah. <laughs> and most of them have ended up on the stage mm -hmm. performing. And last week, you blew yes. my mind the, with the, uh, the, the, you just dropped it at me, yeah. a fact that you are currently in your own band, something mountain, correct? Yes, yes. We're called False Mountains. False Mountains. Yes. Well, how did False Mountains come together? Last time I talked to you, you didn't have anything on the go. You were trying to do something solo. Yeah. And suddenly you're in False Mountains. <clears throat> yeah. Well, well um, I met this, I met this person, uh, her name is Laura Chivika, and I met her through sort of a, a common acquaintance. And then we just sort of met and just started swapping ideas and it was like, hey, do you just want to start like a two-piece sort of thing? And so then, yeah, and that was in, oh, sometime in July? I Crazy. Think. So, yeah. See, now, if we were making proper television, this is where I would put shots of your band yeah. while we're talking about it. However, these shots do not exist, not in my video library anyway. So not when, in anybody's video when library. When can I have uh, a chance to record some of your band, sir? Well, I want to call it Dougler Mountain. D because Dougler Mountain. I wrote down, <laughs> I wrote down Dougler. <laughs> <laughs> which is Doug's nickname, who's currently operating the camera shooting us. And then I couldn't remember the first part of your band, yeah. so it turned into Doug Dougler Mountain. Because I was, <laughs> if, if neither of you have a whole lot of material, yeah. I know Dougler wants a solo show. Yeah. <laughs> I thought maybe we could combine it. Yeah. You guys could each get half an hour. We could call it Dougler Mountain. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> No, we, 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 we have... <laughs> I like how quickly yeah. you abandoned that idea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no, I'm going to have to shoot that down, unfortunately. Kay. Anyway, but, but no, we, we do have a good six or seven songs, and okay. we're just currently trying to, I guess, really perfect them for a live setting. Nice. So probably r really late 2013, early 2014 is when you're going to start seeing us around the city nice. sort of thing. Well, despite all the Kurt Cobain references, it, does, it doesn't get much liver than stripped down. So we yeah, hope you're on the uh, hope you're on the show one day, really quickly. Do you spend a lot of time in PA? No, not really. We don't talk. You know, every time a Regina band comes on the show, I'm like, oh, Regina, this Regina band. Yeah, but, but then PA. PA is just like, I love yeah, PA though. I really do. I'm a huge fan of Prince Albert. It's on the way to the lake, and I don't yeah, mean that. I don't mean that condescending, but I can guarantee you about three or four times every summer, I am the happiest damn person yeah. in Prince Albert. We <laughs> stop and we get a coffee, and I'm like, I'm 45 minutes away from the lake. Yeah. Oh, it feels so good to oh, be in PA. Good. I was, like, I'm trying to remember, one of the last times I was there was actually for, like Joel said, the, um, what was it, Search for the Stars? Is that what it was yeah. called? Yeah, yeah, my father and my aunt were sort of running that alongside with another person whose name I kind of forget right now. But yeah, and so then I, I went down there for, or down up whichever way for, for one of the, um, one of sort of like the shows, I guess. So yeah, it was pretty good. Before we get you to throw a commercial break, yeah. I just had an epiphany right yes. now, okay? an epiphany. What did okay. we do for episode, okay, for episode 100, New York came to us. Yes. For episode 200, where did we go? We went to Regina. What do we think about episode 250? 250 PA. Yeah! It's like this connection. Yeah, yeah. You're there. Exactly. You finished before I started. We should do it. We should commit right now. Episode 250, Prince Albert. Okay. Are, are you down to, to taking all the all the stuff up there? It, it couldn't have gone any worse than Regina yeah, did. That's true. <laughs> oh, just technical difficulties one after the other. It's like that's Regina true. equipment and Saskatoon equipment just <laughs> ne'er shall meet yeah, ever we, again. All right. Yeah, we might as well just sort of give her and just I think see we've, what happens. I think we've uh, eaten up enough of their time. You want to throw a commercial break? We'll be right back with Jeep Luxury. Jeep Luxury. I still The following sponsors are proud to support community television. The Hairstyle Inn, located in both Lawson Heights and Circle and Center Mall. Long and McQuaid at 721 43rd Street East, and their phone number is 664-1966. Mr. Sicily Pizza in their new location at 833 51st Street. Their phone number is 
Curtis Anderson's wardrobe is provided by Ultimo Yermoda, located in downtown Saskatoon, 664-6640. And we're back. You're watching Stripped Down. Prince Alberts, what is it? The kid band supergroup of Prince Albert. Cheap luxury spending 60 minutes with us in the Shaw TV studios. It is Stripped Down's 205th episode. A lot went on before the last commercial break. We heard a beautiful song written about your father, and we just committed to doing episode 250 in Prince Albert. I might go back on that if it's in like the dead of winter. If it's in summer, we'll go like warm. I don't know if I want to drive everybody down in the dead of winter to Prince. You know, not a good idea. No, <laughs> there's nothing worse than somebody making you drive from PA to Saskatoon or vice versa yeah, just to play know, music, right? right? Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly what I did to you guys thing. tonight. Okay, sorry. <laughs> uh, back up. Yeah, the last uh, really moving song about your dad. Yeah. I don't know how much or how little you want to talk about it. You well, can just give um, me the thumbs up and I'll move on. Like I'd, I'd written a few so real, a few songs about uh, him passing before, but uh, this was kind of the first one that kind of clicked that resonated with me more than the other ones. I mean, the other ones were still good and all, but this one was kind of drove home a little bit more. And so I, I kind of decided, decided after I played it on Search for the Stars that I would bring it here as well. So oh, thank you very, very much for that. Uh, again, reading the bio, your first huge show sold out the venue with 200 people in attendance. I'm pretty This yeah. isn't made up. Mm -hmm. And you raised $1,000 for local nonprofit organization. What is it? Uh, Katiri House. Katiri House. Before we talk about what the Katiri House is, I had a flashback. There was a, a fiddle player, a champion fiddle player on Strip Down a couple times named Carnell Switzky. I don't know if you heard him or not. He had a huge CD release party, packed the Odeon, and he gave it all to the Crisis Nursery. And when he told me that, I had the same feeling when I read this. I was like, you guys are doing it wrong. You're supposed to make money. <laughs> to, straight out of the gates, uh, give it all away. But seriously, good for you guys. So yeah. how... How, how big of a first step was that? Getting that, was, that many people raising that much money and making that much of a difference? I think at the time that was like, that was huge, mm -hmm. I think, for yeah. us. I think it's know. still huge. I, I, I don't think know so, what yeah, the time like, is. For how I big, haven't raised $1,000. For how big PA is too, and like, I don't know, I, I was blown away. And we organized it all of ourselves. Like it wasn't like, hey, mom, can you throw us a fundraising concert? You know, it was kind of like, okay, let's book the venue and get all the stuff lined up. So, yeah. So that was kind of like our moment That's, where. Again, the word was used a couple times in here, but it's very fitting. That was ambitious. Like, that's <laughs> hats off to you guys. Were yeah. you ever, was there ever like a freak out part where you're like, what are we doing? I mm, don't really. really. Um, I don't think so. I Just soldiered on? I, I think so, yeah. For the most part, it was good. Mm -hmm. um, I think the venue only was supposed to hold like 180 or something, so we were mm -hmm. over capacity a yeah. bit, but <laughs> for a good cause. Let's Absolutely. Uh, so, the, again, I don't want to mispronounce it. The, Katiri House. Katiri House. What is the Katiri House? Where did the money go to? They, they're like, yeah, they're a nonprofit organization in uh, Prince Albert. Uh, they do a lot of like spiritual counseling and helping through that. A lot up north, but in PA as well. Um, sometimes it's religious, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. So it's kind of, they do a ton of stuff. Whether it's they help people out if they, um, yeah, if they need like spiritual counseling or just like counseling for anything, basically they do that, um, as well as lots of like. Bible stuff and uh, mm -hmm. services and that it, sort. So. It makes sense. It's so beautiful. Just you know, Prince Albert and in North. There's so many camps, Bible and non-Bible in that area. And I remember meeting the other Curtis Anderson. This is a true story. He's a camp counselor out at is it Kadesh? Kadesh. It's somewhere yeah. around that area. And we had the same. I, I've, I know I've told the story a million times, but just in case you haven't heard, we have the same eye doctor. We have the same doctor. So every time I go to the clinic, it's like Curtis Anderson, and I have to tell him the, my year I was born, because they get the two Curtis Andersons mixed up. And I always assumed he was the evil Curtis Anderson. And then I met him, and he was a Christian camp counselor. <laughs> uh, wah, wah. All right. Uh, any uh, more fundraising plans for the future? Again, kind of set just, the bar. Just did one. We just what? did one last yeah. Friday. Uh, that's actually kind of funny. Um, okay. Yeah, us and another uh, band, Almighty Voice, out of PA. Uh, yep. We came together with them. Actually, myself and their uh, bass player, Abraham. Um, we kind of decided let's let's throw something, make it a little bit bigger. Um, so we put it in our uh, Rawlinson Center in PA. Um, and yeah, we, we raised some funds for uh, Canadian Mental Health in Prince Albert, and as well as uh, Prince Albert Multicultural Council. So that was last, I guess, last Friday. So that's we, awesome. And that was a band we tried getting on last spring as well, and it just fell through. Yeah. <laughs> Regardless, 
Uh, we got three songs left. We should probably jump to song number five, six, five, something. Before like that. we take our last commercial break and wrap things up with cheap luxury, what's what's next? Uh, this one's uh, one of our earlier songs. Actually, I believe it was like maybe the second or third song we uh, wrote. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so this one's on our, our first EP. Uh, this is one of the ones we decided to keep that we that we uh, thought fit fit a little bit more with our set. Now this one's called Hiding Out. Hiding Out. You bet. Take it away. Cheap luxury. <laughs> following sponsors are proud to support community television. The Hairstyle Inn, located in both Lawson Heights and Circle and Center Mall. Long and McQuaid at 721 43rd Street East, and their phone number is 664-1966. Mr. Sicily Pizza in their new location at 833 51st Street. Their phone number is 975-0345. Curtis Anderson's wardrobe is provided by Ultimal Yermota, located in downtown Saskatoon, 664-6640.
and we are completely out of time with the Kid Band Supergroup of Prince Albert. I'm never going to get tired of saying that. A cheap luxury. Did you guys have fun? We sure oh, yeah. did. Yeah. yeah! All right. <laughs> Enthusiasm. I had a great, uh, great 60 minutes with you guys. Thank you so much for making the drive to Saskatoon and doing Strip Down. Uh, for all things cheap luxury, basically, just Google cheap luxury. I would say, yeah, you're And then bet. click on the first one, which is luxury hotels, and see how cheap you can get to Cancun this That's time of year. And then go to the second one, which is uh, cheap luxury out of PA. You bet, yeah. And Facebook, is that the best? I think, I think so, yeah. Uh, your best bet is probably either to Google cheap luxury band or to hit us up on Facebook. That's our... All right, thanks uh, so much, you guys. Got to give a big shout out to the two people in the control room again tonight. Again, we're working at a deficit. There should be three people in there making this happen, but again, this week there's only two. So, huge shout out to our director, Bryn Kreisa, and our senior technical consultant, Mr. Jay Newfeld. And of course, Davis Baker on audio, Dylan and Doug Evans on camera, and the biz himself, Jordan Bisdell, helping us out. You can uh, find us on Facebook as well under Strip Down. You can follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Strip Down Sask. Big thanks to our sponsors, Ultimo Uramoto, Mr. Sicily Pizza, Long McQuaid, and the Hairstyle Inn. For the last time tonight, ladies and gentlemen, cheap luxury. Thank you guys. Okay. One, two.